I'm pleased to introduce Xin Fu from um, uh, UCI, who's going to talk about Kader Einstein metrics near an isolated log canonical singularity. OK, thanks uh, for the introduction. And thanks, uh, Professor Yanir, Thomas, and uh, Jeff for the invitation. So it's my honor to speak here. The, there are a lot of ac experts uh, in complex geometry here. So um, today I'm going to discuss Kader Einstein metric uh, near uh, isolated log canonical singularity. Uh, focusing on the geometry side, maybe uh, I will, in a moment, I will um, introduce what is a log canonical singularity. So here's the plan of my talk. So the first part, I will uh, review um, background of complex, complex non-jump pair equation. So uh, first I will discuss, of course, we know that uh, one of the motivation of com complex Monte Carlo equation is to study the is looking for the Kalian symmetric. So first, I were looking for Kalian symmetric on a canonical polarized variety. Yeah, by the way, in this talk, when I say Kalian symmetric, I always assume it's a it's a has a negative scalar curvature. So the classical result of Oban Yao. Uh, can find a uh, Kalian symmetry on canonical polarized smooth, uh, maybe smooth manifold. Um, uh, by Kowadri's uh, fundamental C0 estimate, so Kalian symmetry can even be constructed on singular variety. On the other hand, um, the Kalian symmetry, complete Kalian uh, symmetry, can also be constructed on. Um, Strongly pseudo uh, convex domain initiated by the Chen and the Yao using the so-called boundary geometry method. So that's the that's the history somehow. The compact case, singular case, and the, even the uh, complete non-compact case. Then the second part, I will move to uh, um, I will discuss my result with my collaborator. So we we consider uh, we considering a uh, Construct, uh, constructing Kalian symmetric uh, locally. And namely, we want to solve a delicious problem. Then we, uh, then we discuss the geometry of the Kalian symmetric. And the third part, if I have time, I will uh, mention the uh, optimal asymptotics of Kalian symmetric on hyperbolic cusp. So let me start um, part one. So let's X and be a complex manifold um, with canonical bundle be a positive. Um, then a question is to ask if there is a kind symmetric on X. So to looking for a kind symmetric, we just need to look at the following complex to solve the following complex module pair equation, where theta is a metric in the Taylor class of the canonical bundle. And the omega is the uh, volume form. So uh, we can consider the following continuity paths. Uh, namely, we consider a family of equation theta plus dd bar phi t to the n equal to the right hand side. And uh, here, capital F is defined as a log theta n to the omega. So a classical result of Oban Yao said that. Um, Phi t in the family of equation one uh, satisfy uniform estimate, uniform C0 estimate. So more precisely, phi t will be controlled by the data uh, depends on theta, uh, the C0 norm of capital F and X. So uh, here I, I want to emphasize that uh, uh, this C0 norm of phi t will depend on the C0 norm of capital F. Then uh, CoreJ has a, a fundamental improvement about C0 estimate for the complex module pair equation. Here's the setting. So let X uh, um, be, a, be a compact manifold theta is a Kähler Kähler form. And omega is a volume form satisfying the following normalized condition. That the volume of theta n is equal to the volume of uh, uh, Omega. So 
also we assume the volume form capital omega, oh sorry, capital omega over theta n to the p is uh, less than capital K for some p larger than one. Then the complex modern pair equation, theta plus dd bar phi to the n equal to the volume form, we are satisfied the following um, C0 estimate. Phi minus super phi is smaller than a constant, depend on theta, uh, manifold x, and uh, only uh, depend on the LP bound of the, of the volume form. Here is this capital K. So the improvement is um, this C0 estimate uh, doesn't depend on uh, the pointwise norm of this uh, right hand side volume form. It only depends on the uh, LP norm of the right hand side. So, with this improvement, um, people are able to construct a uh, kind of symmetric on single variety. So, here's the, uh, here's the setup. Now, again, x n is a canonical polarized, but now uh, it's a single variety with Kawamata log terminal singularity. And theta is a Keller form in uh, class Kx. Again, we can see the same equation, theta plus d by phi to the n equal to e to the phi. Here, omega is a volume form, first the, um, it, it's uh, it's rich, uh, it's rich uh, form is equal to negative theta. So the equation is, uh, is the same as, uh, as before. It, uh, we are considering the equation on a single variety. So uh, to solve equation two on uh, the smooth locus of X, uh, in a moment we will reduce to a, a family of degenerate modern pair equation. But before I do the reduction, before I solve equation two, I want to uh, discuss a little bit about the um, algebraic singularity. So what is our matter log terminal? So for a single variety, if we fix a log resolution pi y to x, then we can write the difference of canonical class ky minus uh, pullback of kx as a as a, um, a combination of exceptional divisor ei. So when ai here is a coefficient ai is larger than negative one, then we call it Kalmata log terminal. If it's uh, only uh, no less than negative one, we call it log canonical. So here are some example. Example one is uh, we're considering a, a affine cone over a, um, a quadratic uh, quadrant. So it's a, it's a, in, in fact, it's affine cone over CP1. So it's, it's Kawamata log terminal, example one. The example two is uh, we consider affine cone over elliptic curve. And it's, uh, in fact, it's a um, log canonical singularity. So um, analytically, K, uh, Kawamata log terminal means that uh, if you look at this uh, difference of canonical class, AI, negative, uh, AI nec uh, larger than negative one essentially means that uh, there exists a local volume four on X. When you pull back um, omega X to wedge uh, bar omega X to the smoothest manifold Y, then it's, uh, it's uh, P, P larger than one integral. That's the meaning, that's analytical meaning uh, of uh, um, KRT. But when you are in the situation of log terminal, so since you allow AI to be negative one, so then you can imagine if you pull back this um, omega x, which bar omega x, then it's, uh, it's, uh, it's even not L1 integral. Here, somehow L1 is the borderline case. So uh, in other words, um, log canonical uh, is, we, we, could, we can't apply Kowalgi's uh, Caesar estimate uh, to the log canonical case because here L1 uh, also fails. So now I'm, I'm, I'm trying to solve equation two on a single variety. So first I do a reduction, I fix a resolution pi to x, then I pull back the equation to manifold y. y is a manifold, it's, it's not singular. So here is the uh, pullback omega x equal to this guy. Uh, 
just because uh, the KLT property, then the AJ will be smaller than one, then the right hand side will be LP, P larger than one integrable. That's good. Um, then we do a perturbation for the equation two more precisely. Now we pull back the kilo form pi theta, then it's then pull back of theta is uh, only semi positive. So I add a little bit here, omega here, this little omega is a kilo form. So S is a positive constant plus d by phi s to n e to the phi s. For the right hand side, I only I also do a little, a little bit perturbation, namely I here I uh, for the divider, here I plus s, and the, for the divider on the um, denominator, I also plus s. So this equation, when s larger than zero, is a perfect uh, smooth equation on a smooth variety. Then um, by the coordinates estimate, uh, we need a we need, we have phi s. Uh, the C0 norm, C0 norm of phi s is uniformly bounded. Um, yeah, I should mention it's not a direct result for by coordinate because if you look at the left hand side, uh, the, the reference form pull back theta plus s omega is also degenerating. So uh, in coordinate's result, he fixed a kilo form. But uh, yeah, I should mention that. So with some additional work to deal with the degeneracy of the reference form, theta plus s omega. So finally, this leads to the following theorem. Uh, let x be a canonical polarized or Calabi-Yau singular variety with KLT singularity. Then there's a Klein symmetric or smooth, smooth locus of x. I uh, SDU gauge the Riachi and the Zhangzhou. Okay, so let me pause for those three seconds. Is, is there any question? Okay, maybe this is well known, so let me continue. So on the other hand, we can construct Kalanis metric, um, complete Kalanis metric, which initially uh, initiated by Chen and Yang. So let omega be a strongly pseudo convex domain with most boundaries and there's a unique complete Kalan symmetric omega k e on, on the domain omega. They develop uh, um, a so called bounded geometry method and quasi coordinates to, to deal with it. So um, I just want to do some remark about this construction. So, first, um, first um, for this theorem, they can, they can construct a reference metric which is already. Uh, close to Kalanistan in some sense. Then the omega ke, the Kalanistan constructed, is somehow uh, a small perturbation uh, in some sense of the reference form. So the remark is um, if we just consider a complete uh, Kalan symmetric on complex manifolds, it's, it's, all, it's always unique. It's unique. Also, uh, if we um, Use boundary geometry method when we construct a Kalan symmetric. The Kalan symmetric obtained is only known to be equivalent to the reference form. It's only known to be, uh, to be equivalent to the reference form. So by using Chen Yao's method, there are, are more construction about the Kalan symmetric on a um, quasi projective manifold. So here, let x bar be a smooth projective manifold. D is a, a smooth hypersurface or divisor sitting x by x. So let R defined to be the canonical class plus divisor D, which is ample. Then uh, we can construct a very good uh, reference metric, the so-called carson Griffiths metric on um, bar x subtract the divisor d. So on this uh, quasi projective, maybe, maybe, sorry, maybe it's not necessarily quasi projective, but it's an open manifold. So omega is, uh, we can do a kilometric on this x, which is defined to be um, the rich curvature of the ample amount of air minus i d d bar log log one over s square. So here locally, if the divisor d is defined by Coordinate zn equals zero, then 
a square is roughly the n square e to the phi. Phi is a um, is a metric associated to uh, the lambda no d. So let me mention if we forget about e this e to the phi, and if we just look at the minus id by log log one over a square square. The, it's exactly the uh, punk. It's a, exactly the Poincaré metric on the puncture disk. If we just look at um, this part, and the construction is uh, by Kobayashi and Yao. Then, in the in above setting, then there exists a unique, complete kind of symmetric uh, omega ke, which is omega plus d by u. Okay, so this is part one. I reviewed the um, classical result about Kalin's metric with negative scalar curvature. Now I'm going to uh, discuss uh, my result. So I consider uh, XP is an isolated log canonical singularity embedded in the uh, CN. So I fix a Kähler form with was defined as idd bar z square. Here z square is just the, uh, z is just the coordinate on cn. Then I cut a neighborhood, I call it u, which is defined to be um, z small than a. So this a is, a, is a not important. I just cut a neighborhood of the singularity p. Now here's the result, let u be, uh, be a germ of Isolated log, log, log canonical singularity as above, then there exists a phi, which is chi psh, satisfy, satisfy the following condition. So, first, phi is smooth outside p. Uh, phi also solves the monomial equation. Oh, sorry, I forget to write down what's the equation here, but it's, uh, it's related to Kalin symmetric. And for any, moreover, for any epsilon larger than zero, there exists a C epsilon such that this phi construct is satisfied the following estimate. So in particular, log sigma d uh, will be ne uh, negative infinity. So I don't, so our C zero estimate somehow is not bounded, uh, but it's better than any log pole. So M3, uh, this chi plus d bar phi is a uh, Uh M4, uh, phi goes to negative infinity of p. So here I want to um, maybe emphasize atom two. So the solution we get uh, indeed doesn't have uniform C0 estimate. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's better than any long pole. So since today I want to focus on the uh, geometry side, so let me just do a summary remark about proof. So for the proof, uh, again, we use the uh, perturbation approach, namely I fix a resolution uh, and pull back the equation to the resolution, then I do a perturbation. But uh, the trouble uh, appears since in the log canonical setting, we don't have a uniform C0 estimate for the perturbed family of equations. So, um, but uh, uh, luckily we can, we can somehow locate, somehow we can locate where the boundedness of, uh, boundedness of uh, phi fares. Somehow it's exactly the place, exactly uh, the log canonical locus. So this is a, uh, uh, operation somehow is a barrier construction. So um, then with a, with a Caesar estimate, then I combine, um, uh, then I do the boundary C1 estimate, then I use Bloch's uh, global C1 estimate for minor pair equation, and uh, then C2 estimate, uh, C2 boundary estimate, and then the C2, um, C2, a global C2 estimate of, uh, of Yao, maybe. Yeah, the lucky thing here is, uh, although the, uh, the phi is not uniform bounded, somehow a modification of Blocky's uh, gradient estimate also works here. So finally, then we can solve the equation. 
on 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 neighborhood of xp for any smooth boundary so another mark is uh here i'm choosing reference form as id by this square so you uh you should regard it as a smooth form because um some it's uh, it's uh, it's the restriction of a uh, kilometric or a smooth ambient space uh, so the since this is uh, the reference form is is a standard one then the geometry of the kind of metric in fact uh, should be encoded in the singularity of this part uh, Okay, before I go to the geometry, so uh, maybe is there any question? Maybe a quick one. Do you allow log log terminal singularity? Sorry. Do you allow log terminal singularity? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, we allow lock and uh, lock terminal singularity. So, but uh, here I'm considering only isolated singularity. Uh, the reason is um, I needed the boundary, the boundary of U to be strongly uh, sort of convex um, because I need uh, some classical result like the C2 boundary estimate. But if you do a resolution of this singularity P, uh, I allow there are several some components with with coefficient negative one and, and uh, some other components with coefficient strictly bigger than negative one. It's allowed. Mm -hmm. Now I move to the geometry side. So um, now I'm going to discuss the uh, the kind of symmetric near uh, isolated log canonic singularity. Maybe let's just focus on the following example I mentioned before. So this is a this is alpha and cone over elliptic curve, or you can also regard it as the total space of a negative line bundle error on a torus D with zero section uh, contracted. So this is um, this is an example. So on one hand, uh, in fact, I guess this guy has a name. Uh, people call it hyperbolic cusp. On one hand, we can explicitly, explicitly construct a complete kind of symmetric near singularity P. So here is a, is a picture. So if we look at this singularity X defined by this algebraic equation in the Euclidean, in the Euclidean topology, it, it should be the, this guy on the, uh, on, the, on the left hand side. But for this guy, in fact, uh, it's, uh, it's um, um, it has a complete kind of symmetric. Uh, so the, the picture on the right hand side is the uh, is shape of this X under the kind of symmetric. Uh, the origin is pushed to the, is pushed to the infinity. So, okay, so uh, yeah, please keep this picture in mind because uh, uh, so later when I say uh, a complete, Einstein, I mean, it's complete towards the singularity. It's complete towards the singularity, but uh, it's, it's in fact incomplete uh, here on, on the boundary. But I somehow, I only care about the behavior of uh, the metric towards the singularity. So this side is complete and this side is incomplete, but I only care about the uh, behavior here. So uh, there's a model metric on this hyperbolic cusp. Well, essentially, it's the it's the it's a ball quotient. It's the it's a Bergman metric, which is invariant on some uh, group group action. So there's a in this example, this uh, chi model uh, I call in effect is the hyperbolic metric. For this hyperbolic metric, there's another way to construct it. It's just uh, uh, you choose a, a metric on this negative line bundle, and uh, whose uh, rich form is uh, who 
um, the negative of the rich form is a rich flat metric on, on, on OD, then you can use some ODE to construct uh, the hyperbolic ma metric uh, on, this, uh, on this X. So then, uh, then I ask uh, the following question. Uh, so now we already have a good uh, Chi model, uh, which is Chi Einstein. I already have a good Chi Einstein metric here. Uh, if I have some other Chi Einstein metric, so can we compare um, our Chi uh, model and Chi prime? So that's the question. So a priori, so if you have two Kalein symmetric on this set, um, since it's complete, you even don't know it's equivalent or not, right? Because uh, it's complete. So in the following talk, uh, I aim to compare two complete Kalein symmetric on this set. So here's the result. So Suppose I have two kind of symmetric on uh, u uh, minus p, subtract p. So here p is isolated local non singularity. Then let rx be the distance to the boundary of u. And the r prime x is the distance to the boundary of u under the metric chi prime or, or t prime. So the boundary of u, uh, it should be here. So uh, R and R prime are the distance to the boundary with respect to uh, these two different kinds of metric. So if these two metric are complete towards P, then I have the following estimate uh, for, the, for the volume ratio. So namely, I, I, uh, for the volume ratio, I have it's um, larger than one minus C over R prime, smaller than one plus C over Rx. So in particular, if R prime X is very large and R X is very large, then this volume ratio will be uh, almost one. Okay, let me, let me also remind you uh, what is the situation R prime and R X are very large. So R X is defined to be the distance to the boundary. So when your point P goes to the, when your point, uh, move, moving towards uh, infinity, then it's uh, it's moving away from the boundary. So this theorem just says that if your point move towards the towards infinity, then the volume ratio will goes to one. Here I only assume that uh, these two metrics are complete. So here is a proof. In fact, it's quite simple. So now I fix a point Q uh, such that its distance to the boundary is larger than 2R. Now I do a standard cutoff function uh, right, as, as follows. The, um, this cutoff function satisfies it's equal to one on the BQR ball and it's equal to zero outside of the BQ, uh, BQ2R ball. Then by Laplacian compression, since we have uh, the Einstein condition, kind Einstein condition, then by uh, Laplacian compression, then we get uh, the estimate of the Laplacian of this color function as follows. Now since uh, we have two kind Einstein metric, uh, let phi be the log volume ratio, let phi be the vol log volume ratio, then Trivially, we have this inequality. Trace chi IDD bar, the log volume ratio will be larger than uh, this guy. So then I let uh, this cutoff kind of function times this log volume ratio. I define this guy to be uh, capital H. So since uh, we have a cutoff kind of function, we can assume uh, H obtains some positive maximum at some point Q. Then at this uh, maximum point, I calculate the Laplacian again the following. So since at the maximum point, the gradient of H vanish, then we get uh, HQ is indeed bounded by this guy. 
Then at the point of Q, uh, at the point of Q, we fixed to the beginning. Uh, the cutoff function is equal to one. So capital H is equal to five, then it's smaller than the sky. That's the, then that's the estimate. So this is estimated for one bound. And if you switch the row and the chi and chi prime, you will get the lower bound. This is lower volume ratio. So it's a it's a somehow a localized argument. Uh, I think the proof is simple, but uh, it turns out it's the key result of our paper. Uh, so now I have the estimate for the log volume ratio. Um, the next step is to compare the metric. So here's the result. Again, we consider a germ of isolated log energy and now I put one more assumption. I assume um, the model metric chi has some uh, good curvature property. Uh, here I'm calling it, uh, I call it bounded geometry method, um, bounded geometry of order k. But you can just roughly regard it as that it's, um, it's up to cover, it's very close to the Euclidean metric. Not very close, to, it's equivalent to the Euclidean metric, up to a cover. Then uh, for any other complete kinds of metric GKE on this set, we have the following high order estimate. So here, Nambla is taking with respect to uh, the model metric, omega KE minus chi model um, is, is has the following DK estimate. So here, uh, I want to outline the proof. The proof is not very hard. So let me assume uh, I already have a model metric, chi model with, uh, now we already have a good, good metric, chi model with bounded geometry. So if we have, if I have another chi metric, chi prime, then using a chi condition, I can write uh, chi prime as a chi model plus I D bar log volume ratio. But by previous uh, previous result, I stated this log volume ratio is already bounded. It's already bounded. And in the second step, I solve the following delicious problem uh, on the on this step. So I fix uh, already a complete model metric plus d bar phi to n is equal to e to the phi chi. Uh, to the end. Here I have an arbitrary smooth boundary condition. So by hybrid of Chen Yao boundary geometry method and uh, CKNS, uh, Kafari uh, Kong neuron box, uh, then I can solve the following delicious problem. So let me mention if you solve uh, uh, this equation by using boundary geometry method, then uh, a byproduct is phi going to be uh, bounded up to any high order derivative with respect to this model metric. So M3, uh, by showing some uniqueness of bounded solution of the above equation here. So I show that the bounded solution of this equation is unique. And then combined with uh, item one, I know that for any uh, complete Kalein symmetric high prime, it's indeed uh, from one solution of the directional problem. So this is a this is the place where this phi is bounded used because I can only argue the bounded solution is is unique. So combine these two, I know that the uh, M three, I know that for any complete metric type run, it's indeed from uh, one of the directional problem, one of the solution of the directional problem. So item four, as I said, um, a byproduct of the boundary geometry method is you know that uh, chi indeed has a, a high order derivative bound. So, so that's the proof. So any questions maybe, maybe pause for us.
Okay, so um, now we get the following uh, uh, estimate for any a fixed uh, Kalanis metric, which has some good curvature property, and for any other Kalanis metric, uh, we have the following uh, high order derivative estimate. Uh, but the decay is not uh, the decay on the right hand side is not uh, is far from optimal. So. Um, in a special case, uh, in a joint work with uh, Han and uh, uh, Shi Ming Zhang, we somehow obtained the optimal uh, DK estimate for this for this uh, for this function for this function phi. So here is the. Uh, the result. So uh, record that uh, a hyperbolic cusp. Another way to uh, look at hyperbolic cusp is you you take a torus, you fix a negative lamb bound on it, and you construct uh, the zero section. Then you get uh, um, uh, the hyperbolic cusp. If you move the thing, if, if you if you move the single single point, that's a hyperbolic cusp. So now I fix a Hermitian metric on this negative lamb bound norm, and then you will be a closed tabular neighborhood with uh, uh, with the zero section D in this. Um, here I should say the total space of this lamb bound. Sorry, just uh, let omega ke be a complete Kalanis metric on this uh, tabular neighborhood. Subtract this divided D. Or you can see it as a subtract the singular point. That's the same. That's they are the same thing. Then uh, let phi be the log volume ratio. This uh, theta h is a. So here I should explain what is this h. So in the, we know that in the, in the copy uh, answers construction, if you fix a metric h on air. If you scale this metric, if you scale this metric H, then um, it doesn't affect its rich curvature. So in the Calabi ansatz, there's a, um, um, it's, 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 it's uh, if you scale metric H, then, uh, the Calabi ansatz, the result uh, metric uh, is the same, uh, but uh, you are choosing different metric on air. Then here, um, theta h is uh, somehow the, yeah, maybe, maybe, let me, maybe let me continue. Then there exists a constant c and the uh, uh, data such that for any k, we have the uh, optimal estimate for the, uh, for this log volume ratio. So here we have, Phi plus m plus one log one plus c x. Uh, you take a derivative uh, with respect to theta h. Uh, this o x is uh, is following. K negative uh, two plus one of four negative k of two and uh, have an uh, exponential form. Here, this little x is in fact uh, uh, roughly the inverse of the exponential of the distance function to the boundary. So this guy gonna be when x go to zero, if you look at this guy, uh, gonna be very, very small. Because um, this is e to the negative uh, infinity somehow. And re with respect to the distance, it's, it's, it's more like the double exponential decay because as I said, x is almost the inverse of the um, inverse of the exponential of distance function, distance to the boundary. So here also lambda one is defined to be the uh, first eigenvalue of the Laplace on the torus d. Uh, let me mention this red guy. This red guy. Why we have this red guy? So this red guy, this when x is close to zero, 
then log one plus the x is, is just like a polynomial, right? When x is close to zero. So this polynomial part is indeed from the, um, uh, the scaling on the metric on the Lambano air. So um, in other words, if you choose, uh, if you scale the metric on this Lambano, you get a different phi, the button you don't change the kind the metric. So this theorem tells, that, tells you that uh, if you modulate this uh, scaling on the Lambano, or you can, or in other words, the automorphism on the uh, Lambano direction, then this phi has a, a, a very fast decay. Uh, Okay, this is a remark. Okay, then uh, I stop here. So what's the time? Oh, uh, I I didn't expect. Vicky did very good with time. Thank you for a very nice talk. Um, I'm gonna stop the recording and then open up for questions.